Hey everyone, my name is Stephanie and welcome to my channel um, or welcome back if you are already subscribed and if you are, yay. Um, if you're not, you know, you still got time. Uh, it's good stuff. I am currently doing, I'm doing different diets, not diets like Weight Watchers, but uh, things like paleo, veganism, etc to try them out see what works best for me see what i think will work best for most people and share it with you guys as well as looking at lots of research studies to back up each one of them so we just got back from vacation awesome had a really great time Alexis, my daughter, who you will see later, um, she got to meet some of her cousins for the first time, which was great. Um, we did all kinds of stuff, including going to a children's museum, which was amazing. They had this room with tubes and balls and falling and going everywhere, tubes through the ball or balls through the tubes. <laughs> and um, anyway, it was an amazing room. She enjoyed it a lot. In fact, she enjoyed it so much that she picked up many of those balls and put them into her mouth over and over and over again. And you know, you can only stop so much of that. We try. Uh, she got hand, foot, and mouth disease. Pretty sure from the Children's Museum. Uh, and she passed it on to me. How nice, right? Even though it's not really, um, most adults don't tend to get it because they've had some strain of it as a child, I guess. Um, I guess I did not. And Lucky me. She's almost better and I'm getting there. I still have some sores inside my mouth. So if I lisp at all, my sincere apologies in advance. I know it's annoying. I would not wish this, no, I would wish this disease upon my worst enemy. It is nasty, not fun at all. Uh, and it would be terrific torture. <laughs> but I've been gone for so long for the, for the vacation that I didn't feel like I could put this off any longer. Um, they're taking a while to heal, so who knows how long those bad boys are gonna be in there. At this point, I just wanted to get another video that's out there to you guys and let you know how I'm doing on paleo, which so far, so good. Um, six to seven pounds lost so far, not restricting calories whatsoever. I am just following a paleo uh, lifestyle or diet, and that's been uh, almost a month. So six pounds in almost a month, that is a, uh, that's pretty decent for not restricting calories uh, at all. I feel good, still very energized. The puffiness that I was feeling for a while there seems to have gone away. So hopefully that was just a transitory kind of thing. So the first documentary that I am watching when it comes to paleo is uh, the, called The Perfect Human Diet. It claims to have been actually the first paleo documentary back in 2012. Um, it's by CJ Hunt. Uh, it breaks down the reasoning behind why he feels like paleo saved his life. Uh, he was diagnosed with a heart condition at a really young age um, and he became a raw food vegan for over five years. He loved it and he loved it so much he even wrote a book on it. Uh, then somebody in his life died and life stresses began to just eat away at him and he felt like being a raw food vegan was not providing him with the sustenance that he needed in order to combat those life stresses. So uh, he eventually, after some soul searching and uh, looking around, was led to a paleo lifestyle. The documentary is definitely compelling. It was very professionally done. Um, it was another of the catalysts for me to start this blog, actually. A lot of the stuff in it makes a lot of sense. But I do have some concerns, as I've said to you guys before, about eating a diet that's this incredibly high in meat content. Um, but we'll get into that later and as well as look at some of the studies. There were a couple of research studies that the documentary goes through and talks about uh, that helped the case of eating like our hunter-gatherer ancestors used to. The first was by a guy named Dr. Weston Price. He traveled all over the world and he looked at healthy tribal populations and looked at what they ate. Uh, he was trying to figure out what they had been eating for generations and what those diets had in common with each other. Uh, they were all healthy. Interestingly enough, he was trying to find a vegetarian tribe and he never did. <laughs> I'm not sure why he was. Uh, he was a dentist. Maybe he was concerned about the way that meat rots your teeth or who knows. Anyway, um, they all consume meat 
in varying amounts. Some of them almost exclusively meat and fish, uh, especially at those more northern climates. They did not have the vegetation present to eat it, so largely meat and fish. Another more modern study was done by Professor Karen O'Day, who studies the relationship between diet and chronic diseases. Uh, she got a group of pre-diabetic or diabetic indigenous Australians or aboriginals um, to adopt a hunter-gatherer lifestyle like their ancestors had. They spent seven weeks in the wild and um, they all lost weight, lowered their cholesterol, lowered their blood pressure, and had increased blood glucose control. But my question is, uh, did they take it too far? Was it possible to do the same thing, just removing sugars and processed foods from their diet? Would it have done the same thing and gotten the same result? Maybe. Uh, but that's kind of really the point behind what paleo is about anyway. It only excludes a couple extra foods in addition to sugars and processed foods. Things like uh, legumes, potatoes, and grains. So other than those exceptions, that's precisely what you're doing. You're just cutting out sugar and processed foods. And who among us would really argue that we were meant to be or should be eating processed foods and sugars? So really the only gray area when it comes to paleo so far um, is legumes, potatoes, and grains. The paleo movement started in 1985 when a paper was published by Dr. Boyd Eaton, but it didn't get popularized until 2002 when Lauren Cordain, PhD, wrote his book, The Paleo Diet. But interestingly enough, there was actually a pamphlet written back in 1865 that was basically the same thing as what the, the paleo diet is. So this pamphlet was written by a guy named William Banting, and it's called Letter on Corpulence Addressed to the Public. I went ahead and read it online, and it is most amusing. <laughs> 1865 was a totally different world. Anyway, uh, Banting was just your average guy publishing a pamphlet because he lost weight and he wanted to pass along what he had learned that helped him to lose that weight. That's it. Probably this was because <laughs> the Turkish baths that the uh, doctors were prescribing him for his obesity weren't helping. Imagine that. I can't imagine why Turkish baths wouldn't just make that. I wish, right? Ugh. So Banting talks about having to walk down the stairs backwards because his knees hurt. He talks about not being able to stoop over to tie his shoes. He talks about his girth. He tried to exercise, but at his advanced age of 65, well, if you're already walking downstairs backwards because your knees hurt, it's gonna get worse. <laughs> so he found a doctor that told him to abstain as much as possible from the following. Bread, butter, milk, sugar, beer, and potatoes. He also states that he avoided salmon and pork. In 38 weeks, Banting lost 35 pounds. He was able to walk down the stairs forwards again. Yay! Always a plus. <laughs> he could exercise freely. His sight and hearing were uh, improved and other bodily ailments were ameliorated. Ameliorated. I love these words. I love the way that they used to talk. Hard as heck to get through, but very amusing and interesting. Additionally, he had a friend who did the same diet, uh, was overweight, lost a bunch of weight, also lost the heart palpitations that he was, uh, had been experiencing. So this leads me to believe that not all of our woes are due to sugar and processed foods. Sugar was still pretty rare in the 1800s and processed foods were still yet on the horizon. So this helps make the case that grain is contributing to our current health crisis for sure. So that pamphlet was pretty widely well received. Um, and after that time, maybe partially in part to this pamphlet, I have no idea. Um, it became pretty standard prescription for a doctor when you went to the hospital for obesity to tell you to cut out carbs um, in order to lose weight. It wasn't until the 1950s when we suddenly decided that fat was making us fat. So how did this happen? Somewhere along the way, People started recommending low fat diets, thinking that 
high fat foods might be tied to heart disease. At first, uh, this recommendation came with a warning label that, hey, there isn't enough data out there yet to completely corroborate that this is definitely true. We just are starting to suspect that it may be true. So take it with a grain of salt. Um, somehow, somewhere, that warning label just got dropped and eventually it became common knowledge to everybody that high fat diets caused us to gain weight and die early from heart disease. One of the worst blunders in the history of nutritional science, to be sure. Because of course, it turns out that not all fats are bad fats. Some fats are good for you. The USDA designed its dietary guidelines around this blunder, and it has still yet to recover. Um, they're still basing their recommendations off of reviews from the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology, both of which are heavily supported and funded by food and drug companies. If you're the AHA, the American Heart Association, and you're getting paid for each heart check logo by companies like Kellogg's and General Mills for each different box of cereal that they put on their shelf, and you're partnering with the grain industry for various things, you're not gonna tell people to stop eating grains. You're not. And I'm not a conspiracy theorist person. This information, you know, you can find it online. It's right there. I'm linking to it in my article. I'll put links in the YouTube description as well. I love and believe in capitalism, but allowing your recommendations to be influenced by who's writing your paycheck is not only a conflict of interest, but pure greed. The almighty dollar has become more important than our health and our nutritional recommendations and our entire health industry is suffering because of it. Michael Eads, the author of Protein Power, talks about going to a farm to do research on what farmers feed their livestock to fatten them up and get them nice and marbleized fat in there for all of our American consumption. Uh, so he goes and he looks at their feedbacks. He writes down all the information, all the nutritional content on the bags, comes home and inputs them into his computer. Turns out it was almost exactly to the percent what the USDA's dietary guidelines are. So we are being fattened up just like the livestock that we eat. There was also a really fascinating uh, analogy in the documentary um, using a football field. One goal was the two million years ago um, point, the time of Homo erectus. Uh, Homo erectus, there was no substantial physical differences between them and us. And it's when we started eating meat. Uh, the other zero yard line is today. In this analogy, the 0.5 yard line is when humans started eating grains. Processed food started at the 0.001 yard line. When you look back at from that distance to here, is there any wonder that we are having trouble with our diet? We are so far off base from what we are genetically programmed to eat. All right, so if you read my last article, you know that there's a strong correlation between when we started eating meat and uh, the evolution of the human brain. If we had stayed as vegetarians, in all probability, I wouldn't be speaking to you at this particular high level of intellect. Agriculture did amazing things for uh, the population of the world and the health of the human species in general. We no longer had to hunt for food, um, so we were able to feed more people more efficiently. But there were some negative consequences from it that we may never fully recover from. They, Homo erectus, were eating a huge diversity of foodstuffs. We go to the supermarket and we make a salad and we think that we're eating a lot of different types of veggies, you know. But in comparison to what our ancestors were eating, this isn't true. They had a huge diversity. Once you start agriculture, you seriously reduce the variety in your food. And this also reduces the variety of nutrients you get. I had no idea. I seriously thought that if I was going out and getting 
a bunch of different colored peppers, different colored vegetables, adding all these different colors to my salad. You know, they tell you the more colors, the more vitamins. I seriously thought I was doing well and getting a huge diversity of vegetables, but apparently not. I mean, it makes sense. You find foods that work, uh, that are able to grow better crops, and you just plant more of that food and you kind of phase out the others. So there's all kinds of stuff that they used to be eating that apparently we just don't eat anymore. Uh, Lane Sebring, MD, has been putting the paleo diet's recommendations into practice with his patients for, uh, for years. He claims that it's working really well and um, helping people lose weight as well as clearing up chronic diseases. So he says to think of protein as time-released glucose, glucose being the energy that runs our body. Uh, the liver can take our extra protein and turn it into glucose in a time-released fashion, slowly throughout the day, therefore giving you a steady supply of energy all day long. But eating carbohydrates shuts off this conversion of protein into glucose from the liver. Then your sugar levels get low, you get hungry, and most people at that point are craving a quick fix, which is more carbs. And so begins the cycle. I've gotta say there's something to this for sure. I noticed that if I don't eat carbs in a day or as many carbs in a day, I definitely don't seem to get as hungry. As a side note, the fact that the liver turns these extra proteins into glucose is what trips up a lot of the low carb diets like keto and um, Atkins back in the day. Uh, it, it can keep you from going into ketosis, which is why they are careful to not get too much protein and give you more fats. But we'll get into that research more uh, when I try keto, which I will. So this is just a tiny percentage of what the documentary that uh, The Perfect Human Diet covers. It's a uh, jam packed full of useful info. So I highly recommend it to anybody that's even thinking about paleo. I will be getting into a few more of the points made by this particular documentary as they overlap with um, things that I'm reading from uh, Lauren Cordain's book and some of the other research materials that I'm using to research paleo. A lot of the stuff overlaps. So you will be getting more info obviously on paleo and some of it will overlap with the stuff I learned in this documentary. So stay tuned. I gave uh, The Perfect Human Diet 4.5 out of 5 stars. Very uh, professionally done, like I said, very compelling. The information is presented clearly. Um, and the paleo diet itself is working obviously really well for CJ Hunt. He's been following it for five years and he says that his blood work absolutely backs up his decision. The only negative things that I could really say about the documentary are that, uh, first of all, it was presented in kind of like a news program format, not my favorite format. Um, and sometimes it was a little bit cheesy or over dramatic, but uh, for the most part, it, it really wasn't as bad at doing that as a lot of other documentaries are. So uh, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty good. So this is just the start of my paleo journey. Um, I will be reading some books, watching more documentaries, all on paleo and I will be bringing that information to you guys. Um, I also will be doing a kind of summary of round, rounding it all up at the end and present to you um, how I felt on the diet, what, how much weight I ended up losing, etc. Including blood work, by the way. Um, I am worried about my blood work, my cholesterol, so we'll see. I am going to get blood work done at the end of paleo and see if my cholesterol goes up or down. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and um, check it out and come back and see how it all goes for me. I'm looking forward to finishing. Can you say subscribe? Say subscribe, subscribe. No, <laughs> no, don't subscribe. Don't subscribe, she says. So have you tried paleo? I would love to hear from you, not you. I, you basically are eating paleo right now. <laughs> yeah, um, I would love to hear from you guys. Have you tried paleo? How did it work for you? Did you lose weight? How did you feel while you were on it? Um, do you disagree with any of the reasoning behind eating like our hunter-gatherer ancestors? Do you even think that that's what we are kind of doing here in paleo? Yeah. Do you? Mm. She's feeding me like a little baby bottle. Hey, thanks. Mm. <clears throat> mm. Bye, everybody. Have a good day. Bye, bye.
<laughs> day. Have a good day.